Okay. So because of the humanitarian aid macaroni, we have a higher chance of persuading him to give me some money. All right, yeah, let's do that. Start with a little compliment, then work your way up from there. This is about business, remember. Hey, you seem like a really successful entrepreneur. Would you like to support a member of the local police force? Oh, okay. But why, officer? Well, because it's an investment. <laughs> Hey everybody, Charlie Niner 2 here, and welcome back to Disco Elysium. Uh, when we last left off, we were questioning these two old gentlemen over here who are playing petonk with their balls, and uh, we chucked one into the sea and made Mr. Rene upset here. So we're talking to the Gaston now, and we're going to see what he knows about the Union. Is he a caviar socialist? I don't even consider myself a regular socialist. Politics is not really something I involve myself in, officer. What do you believe in? I believe everyone has the right to think and do whatever they want. Even if it's nothing at all. I'm very adaptable. Clearly. Come on, you. Okay. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for the info. No, thank you. For being consummate professionals. You'll have this case wrapped up in no time. Uh, bye for now. We need to get them another ball because we chucked theirs into the sea. Um, let's go south some more. Let's see if there's anything down here. Let's get out of this crater. We'll come up here in just a minute. Can I go this way? Indeed I can. Okay, there's something here. Plastic wrapped macaroni stamped with humanitarian aid. We saw a lot of pasta wrappers in the trash uh, near the dead body. Everything is good here, this man says. This says humanitarian aid tuna fish, not for resale. Speakers for the people of Samara. Food gift from the people of Messina. A helpline to the company that controls the drawbridge. I'm assuming this is the drawbridge. See what's in this. There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. A variety of shapes and colors. Is this man selling these things that aren't for resale? You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest styles right here. Stylish shades, huh? They'd be even more stylish if you paid for them with net worth. Go over and ask him. Well, let's try them on. Abort. These are hideous. What's more? They don't even fit your face. You can feel them pinching your nose and chafing against your brow. All right, let's put them away. Damn, officer. You look like a mega secret spy. Very secret. They're practically made for you. I'll let you have them for two real and 50 cents. Nope. It's going to be very difficult for anyone to take you seriously with these things on your face. No, you are definitely not buying those. <laughs> Yeah, I'm too sensible for those. Are you sure? But they look so good on you. You should think this through, officer. Rummage through the box. These are all boring. Boring third-rate ho-hum sunglasses made of cheap Sirais plastic. The kind of plastic that melts in the sun. Well, that doesn't sound good. Those UV stickers are almost certainly just there for the show. If anything, these lenses probably direct more UV light into your pupils a uv magnifier that sounds great these are all first rate sunglasses premium design super material very cool uv resistant these will definitely keep your eyes safe and cool 
while doing your dangerous police work. Let's try conceptualization. No luck. Woof. All you find is this lime-colored cellophane visor produced by a bargain sportswear brand called Amphibian, apparently. There's a malformed green frog on its bent cap. So this shows our roll? Yeah. Continue. Oh, that visor is perfect for you, officer. It'll definitely keep the sun out of your eyes while you're shooting criminals. Bang, bang. And all for a mere six real. Continue. Hey, at least it might actually offer some protection against the sun. Not like those cheap plastic shades. All right, let's put it back. You don't like it? Sure, Square Joe. <laughs> we can no buy problem. it. No problem. Let's get you some real shades. And then we could come back and maybe find an actual good pair of sunglasses. Let's leave for now. Let's look in this box. You see two lowly, defeated speakers. Thralls. Slaves, basically. Perched atop them like conquerors surveying the land. A pair of found, durable wear sneakers. Ultra serious. Continue. I can see you were taste for luxury, officer. Can't keep your eyes off those sneakers? Speaking of luxury, you should go over and ask about paying for those sneakers with your net worth. Let's inspect the sneakers. A pair of found ultras. The design is impossibly sleek and simple. A futuristic silhouette with a sleek monochrome colorway, a jet black upper, and a silver lined midsole. Okay. Those sneakers, mister. Those sneakers are the latest found sneakers. Super air, super fine, super cool. Only 50 real. 50 real. Only? That's madness. Fun ultra. We're the future. You remember the slogan from some magazine. Let's inspect the sneakers. These once respectable speakers have been conquered, reduced to a mere prop by the indomitable found ultras atop them. A small heat emboss on the veneer reads, Solidarity aid from the People's Republic of Samara. The speakers themselves don't seem to display any magical qualities. Continue. No, no, don't look at the speakers, officer. Look at the sneakers. The sneakers are the stars here. What about the speakers, though? Doesn't anyone want those speakers? These, officer? These speakers are Samaran garbage. I'm ashamed to even use them for props. <laughs> Don't waste your time on them. You give them to me for free? Samaran trash. That sounds like they're from the Samaran People's Republic, produced under the dictatorship of the proletariat. Can I just buy the sad, conquered Samaran speakers? No way, officer. These aren't for sale. They're bad speakers. Low-fi socialist junk. But I need some speakers. Well, if you want them. But see, they are the pedestal for my sneakers. If I let go of the speakers, where will the sneakers go? I can't leave premium lifestyle sneakers on the ground. So you need the speakers for the sneakers so the sneakers are on the ground. Tongue twister, got it. If, on the other hand, you wanted to buy the sneakers too, I could maybe throw in the speakers for a little extra. 50 cents? Okay. Damn. So you have to buy the sneakers first. It's okay. We'll be back. What's over here? A jacket? There are clothes inside. Cheap second-hand clothes. Smelling of strangers' body odors. Continue. Don't be shy. These are premium class clothes. Good quality fabrics. Best retro design. Save the economy with your style, officer. How about some premium class service over here? Like paying with net worth. Go over and ask him if you can do that. Sure. Save the economy. That sounds off. Yeah, what are you talking about saving the economy? Haven't you heard, officer? We've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash. Keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy eco. Thanks for the advice. Very cool. The economy thanks you, officer. Browse through the box. You find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made from weird polyester blends that make your body itch and sweat in all the wrong places. Is there somewhere I want them to itch and sweat? The box smells like cat piss 
or like an old person with no money. Okay. Economical, but also trendy. Look first hand, buy second hand. Keep the economy moving. 83%, we'll try it. Something cold grazes your hand. Synthetic and sleek, a windbreaker. Surf, it says, but also wind. Summer, 100% waterproof. And sport, all in different typefaces. Okay. Good choice, officer. Mega sporty. And it's only 450 for you, sir. All right, well, I don't have any money right now. Let's talk to him. You see a Samaran street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, his face breaks into a wide, welcoming grin. The name Sileng is embroidered over his breast pocket. Happy shopping, officer! Everything's cool here! What's so cool? Everything's cool. The goods are cool. The customers are cool. The place is cool. And one more thing, officer. What's that one more thing? You're very cool. Bang, 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 bang. Breakthrough imminent. Okay, well, what do I need to do? Solution? I don't know what to do with that. Continue. You feel a twitch in your index fingers. There's a finger shootout of brewing. Whip them out. Don't shoot, officer. Have we got an arrest here or just a shakedown? Oh, it's a shakedown. Good one, officer. Ha, you're a funny guy. Now, what can I do for you? Just kidding, I'm really here to shake you down for some answers to some official police questions. Then fire away, officer. Ooh, fingers pistols helped. Uh, what kind of stuff are you selling? Only the coolest goods in Revashal. I've got sneakers, speakers, extremely comfy pants too. Hmm, right, you... on, right here. No shame, only freedom. Do you have a permit to sell all that? Good joke, officer. <laughs> and we don't have permits. Just economic freedom. Take a look around. Takes a deep breath. You glance around at the crepit buildings, the miserable weather, the sidewalk strewn with sunflower seeds and a dust choked air. It's beautiful. Beautiful freedom. Uh, let's ask him. It is, yes. Anyone can set up their shop whenever they feel like it. Okay. That's right. No permits, no bureaucracy. That's why this city and its law officials are so cool. Okay, no permits then. Hyper cool. Where'd you get those comfy pants? I'm an entrepreneur, officer. I've got sources, buyers, suppliers, distributors, manufacturers, wholesalers. All extremely cool and above board. Is there a discount for cool officers like me? No need for discounts at ceilings, officer. Everything's already on sale. Anything you want, 50% off. 50% off? But did he first mark them up 100% just so that he could put them on sale? Are they really on sale? Or do you just jack up the price first? My man, you know how the game is played. You and me... We should work together. What do you think? Shake things up? Well, let me ask you something else. Anything for you. Where are you from? Me? It's a boring story, officer. Who cares about the past? I'm all business now. All Revachal. We'll check this out afterwards. This man probably comes from Seaguy, sometimes known as the Apricot Suzerainty. An archipelago in the Samara Isola. You're from the Apricot Suzerainty, right? Apricot Suzerainty calls to mind an era when the Sea Guy archipelago was colonized by Revachon. It's a bit of a slur, in other words. Uh, 
Uh, no. Let him answer. That's right, officer. But it's a bad scene for business there. Too many regulations. Extremely bad for an independent local entrepreneur. Hmm, regulations bad. Hey, why not support this local entrepreneur? You can start by buying a pair of sexy pants or cool sunglasses. Maybe some macaroni? Uh, yeah, that macaroni has humanitarian aid written on it. How you come? You mean these delicious pre-packaged shelf-stable meal kits? Really easy to cook, no hassle, really cheap too. Buy some, try them out. Why don't you give me a free sample? No hassle. There's a little of a hassle here, it appears. A moral hassle. Yeah, so humanitarian aid is supposed to be free. This is not for resale. No problem here, officer. I get all this from one of my suppliers. An extremely reputable guy. Yeah, who's that? Oh, he's a good guy. I think you'd get along. I'll let you know the next time he's around. Sure. Interesting. Okay, so because of the humanitarian aid macaroni, we have a higher chance of persuading him to give me some money. All right, yeah, let's do that. Start with a little compliment, then work your way up from there. This is about business, remember. Hey, you seem like a really successful entrepreneur. Would you like to support a member of the local police force? Oh, okay. But why, officer? Well, because it's an investment. An investment? What kind of investment? Hmm. Let them know it's good to have relations with the police. No, they don't like the police here. Not going to confiscate this humanitarian aid you're reselling. I don't think I have the authority to confiscate it. Well, let's see if he bites on this one. I'm a policeman. It's investment and good relations with the RCM. I hear you, officer. What kind of a sum are we talking about here? Hmm. Give me 10 real. Sounds like a fair deal all around. Okay. Okay, I like you, dude. Corruption. Okay, Kim didn't like that. Guillaume Le Million. Bad news. Guillaume Le Million did not become a cop. In 38, he went on a tour to the Sinyao province in Safre where he died of auto-erotic asphyxiation. His body was found hanging from a decorative dragon tree in his junior suite amid drug paraphernalia, unwholesome objects, and the Sylvia Trainer single, Wonderland, skipping in the background. And yes, you can take this as a metaphor for Revachol in the 30s, and also as a warning. Plus one pain threshold, blood oxygen is boring. All psyche learning caps raised by one. Okay. Oh, and I can forget it. So I gotta keep this thought in my mind, which allows those bonuses. Cyclopedia and pain threshold. Okay. Finger pistols. Temporary research. Negative two save a fair. Snapping doesn't help. So that's while I'm researching it, right? Man, so these thoughts will occupy my mind and cause temporary negative bonus, not really a bonus, but keeps me from passing some of these checks. Save or fair. What was that again? That's sneak and panache. We would be down to zero. 
All right, yeah, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Why not? Finger pistols, nine millimeter, internalize. Okay. And then let's check our journal, replace the ball. All right, I think we're done talking with you. Let's go down here, make sure there's nothing else. It's a trash bin. Should we go through the trash bin? Gloves. Okay, what do these gloves do? The ones I have on give me interfacing. These gloves give me electrochemistry. Electrochemistry. Oh, okay. Interfacing. Pick locks and pockets. I think that'll be better for now. All right, close our inventory. See what this is. Roy's Pawn Shop. Okay, so we can get some cash from there. I really want to square my debt with the... with the hostel. Let's grab his health. Let's go in here and see if we can sell something. Maybe we can sell this mug. Pick dialogue options that begin with hold on or wait to gain additional information before the conversation moves on. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff in here. All right, let's look over here. Antique cash register. Bust of a woman. Film projector. What's over here? You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, others in rags, others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. 83%. That's pretty good. Let's try it. Why? What's this? A headless man riding a horse. A headless man wearing futuristic tracksuit trousers that save foul. What is this? Oh, that's the headless phone rider. Who? The headless phone rider. It's an urban legend about a man who rides the streets of Revachol sporting a fawn tracksuit. As you see, he's missing his head. Bird's Nest Roy. 50 cents. Bargain price. I'll throw in the tiny cap too. I think he's looking for it, or something. That part of the story has many interpretations. I'm gonna buy it. He lost his cap when he lost his head. Perhaps he's looking for the head. Yeah, let's buy it. Did I mention that this figurine is supposed to be lucky? Always carry it with you. Inspect the knights on horseback? Big men on big horses, clad in lamella armor and carrying flintlocks. The kind that would mow down a line of enemy soldiers in the blink of an eye. These are Franco-Nigerian cavalry, right? Mm -hmm. I used to be very serious about my Franco-Nigerian knights. Okay. Blue uniforms. They're not all blue. These figurines also wear gold coats and caps, complemented by orange trousers. They are variously posed, wielding swords and rifles with bayonets. This one looks like Rene. This is what the loyalists looked like, yes, at first. Then they wised up and got camouflage. What exactly are these? Which ones? Ah, royalist soldiers from the time of the revolution. The uniforms are painted a bit too brightly, I suppose. What about the figurines and rags? This set of soldiers isn't meant to look impressive. A few have rifles, but most of them carry pistols. Some even shovels and tall sticks. Militia? You're probably talking about the revolutionaries, yes? Yes, they are soldiers, revolutionary soldiers. I think their poverty has been exaggerated for effect. When you place them next to the royalists, it doesn't seem like they could possibly win. Hmm, okay. Hmm. 
I wish it was more nuanced. As it stands, I cannot commit a comment. I don't like either set very much, to be honest. But there are many parents among my customers. Alright, let's leave that table. I love your voice, by the way. Alright, what's behind you here? Or above you, actually. The boom boxes on the shelf look well loved and well traveled. Chipped, dented. They stare at you with the unblinking eyes of their tape reels. Well, we need a tape. One especially catches your eye. Deep gold and amber plastic with a big old handle on top. A classic boombox that says Stereo 8 approved. Must be this one. Continue. Just make sure it works before you buy it. Could this come in handy with my police work? If police work means playing tapes, sure. You can use it for that. Or any other time you'd need to play a tape. Does this work? Absolutely. I've tested each one myself with recordings of speech. Found sounds and music from a variety of genres. Even though I don't really like music. Not even... Disco? That's odd. Why doesn't he like music? Maybe he just hasn't found the right genre. You know, like my preferred genre. Progressive metal. What do you like? The stuff I record myself. Silverware shaking in drawers as motor cars race by. Nocturnal animals climbing on the roof. Airship rotors. That kind of thing. Hey, man, I'm not here to kink shame. Hmm. Maybe you should ditch music as well. Get into these more experimental sounds he's describing. Couldn't hurt. Uh, the Stereo 8 approved machine here. Is the Harman Walsh W2. Made in Vespa. Designed in Seoul. Plays all reel-to-reel -reel format. 2mm, 8mm, 12mm. It's even got a little radio in there. It'll set you back 12 real. Well, I don't have that. Let's see what this is. Mostly military wear, wear with a few more eccentric fashions thrown in. And what is this thing? Telescope? I can't quite tell what that is. A typical Martinez streetlight. Streetlights. Among assorted floor and table lamps. Is that a street light? Yes, officer. As you see, it's in perfect working order. His manner is casual, but his speech is careful, measured. He wants you to know that he has nothing to hide. How'd you get this? It was brought to me to be altered. We are not here to investigate the theft of city property. You have to admit it's rather clever what he's done with it. What has he done with it? Let your gaze run over the street light. The light pole has been carefully cut, and the wiring has been redone and attached to a standard indoor plug. The light buzzes faintly, but persistently. Okay. This would make quite a statement in your living room. How much for the street light? 700 real. A bargain, Woof. I dare say. Mm, we're gonna say two. Even taking into account the risk of attaining the light, that seems a bit steep. There's also the matter of rewiring. But the most important transformation is the light's placement among ordinary indoor fixtures, which has adjusted its morphological field. The light became suitable for use inside the home just a few days ago. Hmm. It's 1300. We should go into the, uh, the kitchen. Let's finish investigating in here. What do we have in here? Oh, this is the item. The figurine. Plastic headless fallen rider sits atop his equally plastic bull. His posture indicating either desperation or pride comes with a set of the infamous fallen cap for which he lost his head. The head is not included. Okay. I don't know why I bought that or why I might need it. Maybe that kid will like it. 
It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. What can I do for you? I feel like I'm interrupting you. Oh no, not at all. I guess I haven't had many customers lately. RCM or otherwise. Who are your customers usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. That would be us. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Quite the collection indeed. It keeps me entertained. His attention is drawn once more to the play of light and shadow on the walls behind you. He's well composed, but underneath it you sense psychedelic processes, bubbling. Some kind of drug, maybe. Electrochemistry. I have gloves that will give me higher electrochemistry. Uh, let's leave for now. We'll come back and talk to him next episode. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoy what I do, please consider a like, a comment, and or a subscribe. And stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you then. Have a good one. Bye-bye.